Hello everyone and welcome. So in this video I'm gonna be breaking down how I did this chocolate brownie in Odini. This is not by any means the way you should do it, but it's the Odini way I guess and hopefully you'll get away with a few new techniques. So let's get started. So here's the final product. We'll start from the top, just from a box, which is the initial point. And then I'm grouping by normals the the, pri the primitives along the x, the positive x. Then promoting it to edges and subtracting the the smaller edges by using max edge length in a in a group node. Then beveling that part, adding some normals and grouping also the outside prims that will be our layering on the top. And I'm doing that by using the max edge length on the primitives. Then let's go to the layering part, the cracking part. I'm blasting away those primitives. Then quad remeshing it since I want a uniform distribution. Subdividing quite a bit since I'm going to be dividing this geometry into smaller chunks. Into uh, some clusters let's say. Then if I disable this mountain and look at this attribute triangle in here, I'm just scattering some points on the surface and then using the near point I can create a cluster attribute by randomizing the near point, as you can see. But if I introduce a mountain and then apply the rest after saving a rest state, we can have these uh, displaced chunks, which is my final goal. So without the mountain it will look like a Voronoi fracture, but with the mountain we get this organic cloak. Then what am I doing in here? I'm grouping some parts that I want to subdivide again, so break it down into smaller chunks by using this uh, randomization in here, and I can change uh, where it lands. Then doing the same again, the same clustering uh, algorithm let's say but this time I, I scatter uh, a few more points and I'm only creating the cluster attribute where the density so this attribute we just looked is bigger than 0.9 so in this case we are just dividing the bigger chunks into smaller ones but not everywhere just in some places then in here I am converting this to a cluster integer attribute by using random flash random f hash i don't know how to pronounce it and this will give you random numbers and some are, are even negative so i'm just enumerating them as you can see in here to have them in order which can be handy promoting this to the cluster attribute to a primitive one and vertex splitting so i can have the pieces isolated into individual elements and in here we can ignore this and I'm promoting to primitive because this vertex split expects a primitive attribute or a vertex attribute, so that's why. Promoting back to point and doing an edge smooth. This is a bit slow, but it will help us have uh, some nicer contours. And in here I'm displacing along the normals uh, randomly based on the cluster attribute, as you can see. Uh, we could always introduce a seed if you want to play with the look. And then in here I'm deleting some random pieces because I don't want to have uh, it completely filled. So I'm just deleting some random pieces and you can change the seed. Then I, I want to displace these outer edges. Uh, I want to move them a bit out. So for that I'm... Uh, grouping the unshared points and then creating a surface distance attribute so by using the surface distance function as you can see in here by uh, feeding the unshared points then I'm normalizing the, the attribute and also playing with the, the, the fall off so I have them just along the, the edges and just attribute blurring as you can see then introducing some noise so I can mix both, let me show you, so I can mix both in the displacement, 
as you can see some parts are displaced some some others uh, are not so displaced and the way i'm doing that is just by displacing along the normal multiplying the surface distance we created and a bit of the noise and you can introduce more or less as you can see and we get this look So now I want to do some transformations to the individual pieces and in order to do that I need to have a center point to transform from. We could use extract centroid but some of these pieces will have the centroid of the mesh so that can be an issue. We could probably we could probably extract the centroid on the cluster attribute and ray project it uh, to the mesh. But in this case, I didn't think of that, so I did it in a slightly different way. Let's see. So I'm just UV flattening and creating these UV islands. Then promoting the class attribute to a prim. And moving the, the geometry to the... Moving the UVs to 3D space. And extracting the centroid there on the, on the class prim. Then just UV sample to the to the original position as you can see and from here we can also sample the normals because we will need them to constrain the geometry to the inner part because we will displace it so and we get back to this where we have the, these pieces and now we can rotate them randomly by using a Q rotate and taking advantage of that normal to rotate around so as you can see, I'm rotating randomly uh, 8 degrees negative or positive uh, along the normal, which is the normal we extracted in here. So this looks something like this. Show you the iframe. So just rotating them, just adding some, some chaos to the geometry. And in here, I need to show you how I did this. So we started with this geometry, which is just the interior part, the cake part. Then do some basic PDV operations to, to have this cake look. And I'm just converting it to VDV and using three noises. So a basic one to remove some of the parts to break a bit the, the cake. And then mixing two, two alligator noises with another turbulent noise and one is just just as a smaller scale than the other one and we get this mixed look between a, a high frequency and low frequency noise so nothing special in there and then I'm uh, creating a proxy let's say so I can easily do some operations and from those points that we extracted those centroids I'm ray projecting them to to this proxy geometry otherwise the cracking parts or the layering parts will not uh, be on the surface it will be offset so for that i am running this wrangle in here to constrain the geometry to the surface as you can see otherwise it will look something like this so as you can see is a bit of the surface and all flat and when I run this, it will be constrained to the surface and a bit randomized. And the way I'm doing that is by using the dihedral function, by gathering the normals from the initial surface and the blurred normals of my proxy geometry. And then I'm just transforming from one, one normal to another one, as you can see. And also subtracting the center, the, the center position and adding it after the fact. Or in this case, adding the point position. So then I'm thickening and doing some basic BDB operations in here. And we end up with this. And the BDB operations are really simple, just a very high frequency noise. And playing with the fit function to have just these small cracks, as you can see. So now we also have this feeling and I shared how I, how I did a similar one in my last short. If you haven't watched, you can have a look. But basically I am ex I'm starting with the proxy geometry, clipping in the middle and blasting away the field polygons 
because I'm filling in here in the clip. Thickening the geometry, creating a points from volume and a viscosity attribute, as you can see. So we will have um, a varying viscosity. So we can have longer streaks and smaller ones. Then just doing a basic collision source. And in this flip solver, I'm loading in the, the, flip, the flip object, creating a pop source on all the points and on and uh, also loading in the collision geometry and for the flip solver i'm just enabling viscosity and viscosity by attribute and some surface tension nothing too complicated and just particle fluids uh, time shift a frame and mesh the surface and mesh the points and we get something like this then it's just a matter of transforming it a bit in to fit a bit better the the shape the initial shape we have so yeah, a lot of work, but in the end it looks somewhat decent, I guess. Uh, this file will be available on Patreon if you want a look. And uh, I hope you have learned something new. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.